everybody. Welcome back. We're on our third segment with Michael Garter, and we're talking about his book, In Search of Lost Lives, Desire, Sanskaras, and the Evolution of a Mind and Soul. And we talked a little bit in the last segment about the evolution of a mind and soul. I want to talk about desire and sanskaras and how you can, you know, so what, what, what did you mean by desires? Um, for, let's start off there. What did you mean by desires or and how would yeah. you take the desires that you have in this life and map it back to a past life? Well, um, desire is sort of what I call the, the fuel that runs the creation existence. Everybody's always running after desires. And one desire gets theoretically fulfilled and five more jump up to take their place. So desires are what kind of get, gets us to create karma, really. Uh, and unfulfilled desires. Mm -hmm. I mean, if uh, you have an unfulfilled desire and it's strong enough, it can actually become part of your destiny mm -hmm. later on. I think a lot of our super talented musicians, composers, actors, they had desires in a past life which weren't totally fulfilled. Like take somebody like Mozart, who's a total genius. I mean, you can't explain that by genetics. Uh, he probably had, you know, there was music in a prior life and he, and he built the desire and he worked on it between lives. I mean, mm. I actually did certain meditations and practices between lives so I could readily, for instance, traverse time and recover past lives. So desire very much uh, defines who you are. And most people are actually a slave of their desire. Mm. And you don't become free of your desires by repressing them. You, you become free by becoming attached to something higher. Mm. So what's, give me an example of what you presume Mozart, or in your own case, what your desires were. Well, uh, definitely I, I had the desire to write um, from two lives ago. Mm. And Particularly my last life, I was searching. I had met, as we discussed in this last segment, this fully evolved master. And I was searching. I was trying to recover what that was. So I read book after book after book. I would go to Foyle's, this old bookstore in England, and you know, read all kinds of books. I was into uh, Rudolf Steiner, Madame Blavatsky, Three lives ago, I was in the Comte de Saint Germain, who's very famous. So I had the desire to write a book so people could find their spirituality, could find their path. Mm -hmm. So I fulfilled that this lifetime. Uh, okay, so you had, I get it now. So you're saying you had a desire from a previous life that you weren't, let's say that previous life, you weren't able to complete the finishing of that desire. And or in even, this lifetime, start. yeah, I mean, a lot of people are like frustrated musicians, but they have to earn a living. So they come back. I mean, why do some people start at age eight or nine and they're just amazing singers or, or musicians? They probably have the desire and they worked on it between lives. Uh, it's, just, it's not just happenstance. And also right. it's sort of like when I was seven, I started drawing residential floor plans and <laughs> wow. elevations. When I was 10, I had a whole portfolio and we had moved to San Francisco. And all of a sudden I, I learned that Frank Floyd Wright had an office there. So I asked my mother, can we send them in to get his opinion? And she said, sure. And I got a letter, come in for an interview. So I was interviewed by the head architect who was very impressed that I'd done this from age seven to 10. He said, when you graduate from high school, come back, you've got a job here. Well, when I recovered my life three lives ago, when I was in post-American revolution, Baltimore, I was an architect, but I was only a commercial architect. And I harbored this, that's all the work I could get. And I harbored this desire to do residential architecture. So I kind of came in with that skill and I fulfilled it. 
Ah, so I see. So when you when you're thinking, I have these talents, I don't know where they come from. How does a seven year old draw architectural floor plans and have a, a, a elevation? Nobody in the family had anything <laughs> to do with it. I yeah. didn't even know. I mean, it just sort of came out of me. I mean, um, it's not like we visited homes and I picked up brochures of homes. No, it's just it just came forth naturally. Okay, so you, we were talking about how you can look at talents and actually take your talents that you have in this lifetime. How, and so how do you map, and in the, in the previous segment, we were talking about, well, how did you do this? How did you, you know, you had this talent of doing architecture. And then how did you, how did that connect you back to the past life where you were doing that work? Well, it fulfilled the desire to do residential architecture. Oh, no, I know I understand. But how did you tune in and find that past life? How did you, so you had this oh, talent. How, how, um, did I re, how did I recover it? Yeah. Well, uh, actually, it was after I saw a highly realized master in England. And I had already started Recover the Lives. And I knew that I had been an architect. I'd already recovered that. Um, and they come through, I mean, the, all these lives came through a, a variety of ways. There are all kinds of triggers. I mean, hearing music, uh, hearing, hearing the soundtrack where Angel Spirit of Tread brought back uh, an important incident in the life. But basically, I, I have been able to create a channel uh, within myself to my higher consciousness. So I can basically intuitively suss what I need to know. And it's always mm. very clear what's not true, mm. uh, what isn't true. So I'm just, but I came in with this service I, I feel I was supposed to uh, perform. Most mm. people wouldn't ever be able to do this or even be interested. Mm. But from the beginning, I was interested in my path. When I was 12, I first read Edgar Casey and read about reincarnation and bingo, I knew it was true and I started to form the desire. I mean, our lives are just really perfectly mapped out. No matter how crazy they mm. seem, we are going through our destiny, wiping out and moving on, as I like to say. Um, but it, it really pays. Um, in my new book, which is coming out this spring, I have a section uh, on the wisdom of grooming. And I write about grooming your destiny, which mm. is a very key chapter uh, because it it shows how you can basically groom your destiny and, and go for something higher and make best use of your life. The whole thrust of the new book is really how to make best use of your life. And it's a very practical hands-on guide uh, for that. Okay, so um, I just, um, hold on. Um, sure. I have a bunch of different questions related to this is, um, so if you're trying to, in, in your particular life, did you end up being an architect or did you, I know that you're right, you've, you have fulfilled your desire of writing books, which came from previous lives. So as I see it, as I understand it, there's this kind of natural drive and desire to do something. And you got curious, like, where did this come from? And through this kind of triggers, and it sounds like you're kind of it's more of a felt sensation, like, oh, I'm pulled there, and you get curious, and then you recover some understanding of that life. And it begins to open up more and more. So um, I wondered if I wanted to be an architect, and no, I was more interested in international relations and then, and then writing. Um, I mean, I did a lot of acting. I wrote and produced plays when I was eight, nine, ten years old. And that comes from four lives ago when I was a playwright in Denmark, actually. Mm. Yeah, so, so it's about your free will then. Like you have, you have an accumulated sense of talents. Uh, you know, you have like a large skill of talents as an artist, as a writer, as an mm. architect, you know. And this yeah. lifetime, it's like, where do I want to take these previous talents and shape my destiny? Like, what is it that I want yeah. to do? Yeah, and that's one reason uh, being young is so exciting because you're very close to what I feel your past lives were, at least I was, and you're working out these talents and desires, and but you're going forward to to your real life, uh, mm. actually. 
Interesting. So um, we have been talking to Michael Garter about his book, In Search of Lost Lives, Desire, Samskaras, and the Evolution of Mind and Soul. And we've been focusing on desires. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, CJ. It's a delight.